Hello everyone and welcome back to my hypersonic liner development in Kerbal Space Program 1.2.2 with Realism Overhaul and this time I decided to conduct my development during a live stream and unfortunately the very beginning of this I don't have the audio so we're seeing this new design lift off of the runway without any audio but we'll get audio later on. Uh, you can see a bit of a problem here. I decided that this new configuration would have the J58, the SR-71 engine, on the tail, and you'll see a better view of that later, but the downforce of that engine is actually pushing us into the runway, so it made it hard to lift off. Uh, and so we had this sort of uh, after-runway bounce that got me off of the ground. So that is like thing number one that needs to be fixed correcting for that downforce from that engine. It sort of placed like a DC-10 engine on the top there. And that's because I wanted to just have one SR-71 engine and one ramjet and see if that worked. Now we have audio because uh, unfortunately I hadn't recorded for YouTube, uh, didn't start the recording for YouTube at the right time. So yeah, but anyway, uh, you can see the arrangements, one on top of another, and you can see why we'd get some downforce. It's not a big problem to put a jet off of the center of mass, by the way, and that's because the aerodynamic surfaces of a plane can counteract that. The whole making sure the center of thrust is through the center of mass is more of a thing for space, where you can't use air to sort of correct that for you and the aerodynamic surfaces. So, here we go. Uh, we've dumped a lot of mass, obviously we have a pod gone, and also one engine gone, and the wings are actually the exact same wings. I just put the outer edges right up against the inner parts of the wings, and so I haven't changed the wing plan for them at all, but we do have less drag. You can see I ignited the ramjet when we were going at Mach 3.5, and I was trying to decide exactly when to turn off the J58, Technically, it should only be rated for 3.7, Mach 3.7, but we seem to need it to Mach 4.2. So we're hypothesizing a J58 development that can get to Mach 4.2. Actually, the best thing would be if we could just combine the J58 and the ramjet. Uh, what we need is a J58 that can work in ramjet mode until Mach 5.5, and it'll be fine if it has the same mass as both of them combined, which is like 3.6 tons. But yeah. This is what we have to do here, and we'll just hypothesize that engine for now. And our goal, again, is to try and get across the Atlantic with 16 passengers. And we can see the ramjet working here, getting us past Mach 5.5, which is our intended cruising speed, Mach 5.5. So I throw down, we actually reach Mach 5.8, I overshoot. And so now I've throttled down, and it looks like we need about 56% thrust to maintain Mach 5.5. Uh, you can see right now an estimated range, well, okay, uh, new scene, uh, estimated range of 4,200 kilometers, and we've covered downrange distance about 1,200-ish. Uh, that'll improve, I think the overall range on, in powered mode is something like 5,600 kilometers right now. Uh, we can improve upon that. I still haven't looked that far. <laughs> I still haven't opened the little far window in the SPH to see where I can uh, reduce drag. And improve situations and of course I just shoved the outer wing parts against the inner wing parts so the wing plan form isn't particularly the best right now so we can work on that and that can improve so there's room for improvement still but the goal is cutting down on mass making it more efficient before adding more fuel right we don't want to add more fuel just yet or do anything to add mass uh, we will just steadily cut down on drag one thing at a time so here we are. Now uh, a few things to note. First of all, I want to talk about geodesics. Um, during this flight, I did not change my heading at all. I didn't turn. And yet, I started out at a heading about 60 degrees and ended up, um, well, more than 100. And the reason for that is because a straight line route across the world is a curve. And you can tell that by just following the prograde vector direct and your heading will change. And if you try and keep to the same heading, you're actually doing a radial, but it's equivalent of radial burn, it's not efficient. So you're accelerating to one side. And so I just want to make this clear. Actually, we were sort of initially headed towards England, but I, uh, I, I estimated the curve wrong, and we are ending up aiming for Lisbon in Portugal. But yeah. And so you can see we're actually further north and headed south, but that's not because we've turned at all. 
we've stayed basically uh, going straight. And that's why, you know, airline routes on a globe tend to be curved. So you can see I've shut down the ramjet. I wanted to reserve the last 900 to 1000 kilometers of estimated range there for the J58. And so right now we're gliding down from 30 kilometers to about 20 kilometers and uh, slowing down from Mach 5 to Mach 3 and we are going to light the SR-71 engine down here and cruise with that somewhat more efficient engine at this level. And normally I think this would be what happens because we want the option of relighting... The, so the thing about the SR-71 engine is it sort of had a weird hypergolic cart... not hypergolic, uh, a T-TEP kind of cartridge to ignite it. Obviously our variant of the J-58, our modern variant, will need to be lightable on the fly without some sort of weird cartridge. So that's another thing that we have to think about. And maybe I'll just outright create a new configuration for our new variant of this engine. But I, I can't figure out how to add the ramjet to it per se. I'll have to see. Because that has to, you know, vary its ISP. On the bright side, I could at least control the ISP a little bit better and get off of the stuck on 4000 second thing that we've got right now. Anyway, you can see now we're headed towards Lisbon. And um, you can see that the range with the J58 is a little bit longer. You know, I shut down the ramjet when you had about uh, 900 kilometers of range. Here we have more than a thousand. But we're going slower. So the benefit of the ramjet is it gets us cro across most of the Atlantic quickly, but we're going to have to go a little bit slower, but still, way past Concord speeds, right? So it's still good. Um, I'm sorry I blocked the clock with the, with the credit for the music, because this was a live stream. Um, but ultimately, we're reaching Lisbon in an hour and a half. And now a word about glideability. So we've run out of fuel. And now we have to glide. So obviously this is not sufficient and we need to cut down and drag and make it a little bit more efficient. But airliners from 30,000 feet going at Mach 0.8 can glide for about 100 miles. This was starting at double the altitude and more than triple the velocity. And it doesn't have quite as much of a wing as a normal airliner, but obviously its glide distance is much more. And so it's a little bit deceptive. Uh, you have to figure for a glide range of about 500 kilometers with this minimum. So that's pretty good. We've got that going for us, but obviously we don't want to rely on gliding to get back. Though, you know, it's not a huge problem. We, all we have to really do is actually uh, cut back on throttle on the J58 a little bit earlier. And we'd still have some fuel left over while we're gliding. Uh, to make any corrections we need. Now I saw an airfield off to the left right there, but and that's just a randomly placed airfield because of the RSS visual enhancements textures, but it sort of leads into the ocean, and so I didn't want that. I found another airstrip, and that's what I'm turning to right now, but this is overly ambitious. I really should have found the flattest ground possible, though it looks flat enough. So we've got our landing gear down. The problem is I don't really know the stall speed of this or the landing speed of this, it's empty now, so that speed is much less than the takeoff speed. We're going at 100 meters per second, and actually this should be able to take off at 100 meters per second, so potentially I should have had some air brakes on here and been able to slow down more than this, and certainly what we see in a moment bears that out. Um, as I drift down here, I'm also coming down a little bit hard here, but we definitely bounce up and the simulator takes a second to decide that it's going to wreck me. Um, and I, I, after the bounce up, I was a little bit at an angle and I couldn't correct in time. And yeah. Well, there's more work to be done and I've discussed basically what I think I need to do. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.